everybody, it's Anne, and welcome back to my combined uh, knitting, spinning, cross-stitching, reading, craftsy, emporium type channel. Uh, today is Thursday, September 27th, so happy fall. Um, I know that I'm a little bit late or a little early, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, getting a podcast out in my normal kind of two-week um, schedule, if you will. I just was out of bandwidth this past weekend. Um, my husband and I got back from a really nice vacation up in Colorado. Uh, wonderful. We definitely needed the battery recharge and it was gorgeous up there. We went to the town of Salida, which is one of our favorites, and then on up to Crested Butte. And I think we hit Aspen Peak at the eight to 9,000 foot level, which is basically where we were. Uh, so that was really nice. We had some gorgeous outings. My husband went fly fishing. Um, yeah, it was just, it was absolutely perfect. But then when we got home, um, he just had a couple more days before he went back to DC. So we did fun things last weekend, like cut like weed whacked all of the nasty fall weeds that had come up because we actually got some rain and did some stuff around the house and he helped me get uh, my bike set up and we did a quick mountain bike ride just to break in my new bike um and kind of an early christmas present so yeah it's all been really good here just super busy um you may notice that i'm filming in a slightly different location today obviously still my house but um, I thought I would try out here, at, which is our eating area, dining room space. So behind me is the um, mantelpiece for our gas fireplace. And you can see I've got some fall decor out. This is Babushka's Blossoms from Plum Street Samplers, which I finished a couple, couple falls ago. I think it's been two falls ago now. Anyway, um, so that's out. And in the other room, which you all can't see, I have a whole bunch of fall themed um, smalls and some things out. So uh, kind of getting in the swing of things here for the cooler weather. It was, I think, right around 40 here at the house this morning when I got up, which was great. I have on a sweatshirt. Um, other life note, I did go and see Robert Plant and the Sensational Space Shifters on the 13th, and it was an amazing, amazing concert. Uh, I told my friend that I went with that I I could die tomorrow and be happy because I got to hear Going to California Live once more. Um, I'm not a huge go to live music shows fan. Um, I used to work in that arena uh, and it gets old really quick when you have like a new act in every three days, basically. Um, so I guess I'm over that because I really enjoyed the concert. It was great. It was, um, the musicians were fantastic. The sensational space shifters, really great group. And I wouldn't really call them a backup group, even though, I mean, I guess that's technically what they were, but, um, some, crazy great musicians in that group. Um, I was a little bummed. They did, um, he did some of his older Led Zeppelin music and then some of his newer stuff. All of it was great. I wish that they had done Cashmere, but you know, that's okay. Uh, they did Gallows Pole, which is not often performed live, which I loved. Um, and as I said, going to California and I got to tell you, I hope that I am still performing at as high a level in my profession when I'm 70 because he still has an amazing voice and definitely knows how to sell things to the crowd. So I can't, I can't even imagine how strong his personality was when he was in his 20s. So anyway, rabbit trail over there. And you'll excuse me again today because it's still sagebrush season here and I still have a runny nose because of my allergies. Okay. I think that's enough life update. I hope that's enough life update. Um, 
suffice to say everything is well here and I hope things are great at your end too. Um, if you are a new viewer, hello, welcome. Thank you for checking me out. If you are a returning viewer, as always, thank you for coming back and spending some time with me. You know, I always enjoy visiting with you guys in comments and appreciate your thumbs up and your likes and all of that good interaction. So thank you. Um, so let's jump in now. I'm going to talk about knitting first. <clears throat> kind of some administrative stuff. Let me get that off the table first and then we'll talk about what I've actually been knitting. Uh, Stitches SoCal will be kicking off the first weekend in November. Um, I will be attending. I will be teaching. Uh, I've got one class on Thursday that I think is sold out or pretty close. And then one, one longer class that is Saturday, a Saturday afternoon session. And then you guys have some homework to do. And then Sunday morning we finish up. Uh, great time if you're in the area. I'm hoping to connect with Sarah at Stitch and Mommy um, and maybe her mom uh, at the event. Hopefully we can make that work, Sarah. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that, that all shakes out and happens. Um, I don't think she watches my podcast, but if she does, Jenny, thank you so much for offering to pick me up at the airport because that is such a huge load off the logistics and planning and everything else. So thank you for doing that. I am grateful and appreciative and I can't wait to see you. Um, in the shorter term, Taos Sheep and Wool is happening next weekend. So that would be October 6th and 7th. I will be at Moon Cat Fibers on the Taos Plaza. Uh, Kathy already carries my yarns um, and she's going to be hosting me for a kind of meet and greet. I will have copies of my new pattern collection there. More about that in a minute. And um, it should be a great day. The weather's looking pretty good. It's not, to, hopefully not gonna be too, too warm. Um, I think they're calling for upper 60s and partly cloudy. So we'll hope for no rain and definitely no snow uh, and see how that goes. <laughs> you never know, it's kind of a little bit of a crapshoot with towels. Sometimes the weather can change pretty quickly up there. And then in shop notes, um, some folks had asked about the Celtic Year Club. That is open. It will be open through the end of October. I plan to ship the, the kits out to the Canadian and overseas folks uh, around the 21st. And then I will be shipping U.S. kits around the 28th, I think it is. Well, here, I have my calendar in front of me. Why don't I just tell you? Um, 29th, which is a Monday. So it should be there in time to um, kick off Samhain, which is the Celtic um, festival that closes out the fall season, the sort of sunny half of the year, and moves into the dark half of the year. Um, there will be a separate video up. Um, that will be an unboxing to do like a preview and show folks who are in the club what's in the box and it will also be me talking a little bit about that particular festival so if you're interested in that you still have plenty of time to order another whole month so knock yourself out um, okay I wanted to mention really quickly that my friend Kathleen Dames, who you all may know I have collaborated with on several pieces, um, and she's actually one of the designers for the Celtic Year Club. She has a new collection out called I Knit Paris, and I'm going to insert a uh, photo of the cover of this new collection here. So this is a great group of fun things. Um, there's all kinds of tidbits about Paris. If you are a Francophile, love that Parisian feel, you'll likely love this collection too. Um, I don't have any affiliation with it. It's not my designs or my yarns, but she's a good friend and I am always happy to share great knitting collections with folks. So um, I will link to it below uh, on Ravelry. So if you're interested in picking up a copy of it, you can. I believe they're offering a discount right now on the print copies if you buy the print and ebook co combo together. Um, so you can look for that. Okay, next. We are so close. 
it is happening <laughs> this next week. Um, I think it's the first. Again, I have my calendar in front of me. I could just look as opposed to guessing at dates. I guess I like doing that. Hang on. Hang on. Yep, Monday, October 1st. The Santa Fe Collection is releasing. Um, I will have print copies of this available at Taos, which I'm happy to sign. Um, if you pick up a copy of the print book, which will also be available on my website, it gets you a coupon code that's inside the back cover to pick up the entire collection as well as PDFs on Ravelry so that you can um, work from those if you like to, you know, like open the charts in a PDF reader, like a little bigger version of it. So... I am super excited about this. This is the first collaboration that I'm doing with the Yarn Guys um, in kind of a knitting collection sort of way. Obviously, I've been collaborating with them for quite some time. Um, sorry about the glare on my glasses. Tried to sort of sit someplace that it's not noticeable. Anyway, Santa Fe Collection. My lovely friend Teresa modeled for me, and this is actually all at her gorgeous house. Um, this is the Chamayo cardigan, which I have already previewed on Instagram, um, where you can find me at Willy Wonka Fibers. I guess I should mention that or on Facebook at Willy Wonka Fibers. Uh, there are six pieces in this collection. They're all women's. They're all fingering weight items. So there's a jacket, a skirt, this cardigan, a pullover, a shawl and a pair of mitts so you can kind of pick and choose anything that suits your style and your uh, preference what I know some folks don't love garments and I know some folks do um, these are all knit in um, Rauma yarns which are the yarns the Norwegian yarns that the yarn guys import um, I knit all of the samples in their fingering weight cotton which is Pandora and we've included the information and optional other color choices in Finnelgarn, which is kind of their traditional jumper weight um, wool. And then their luxury blend, which is an alpaca wool blend. So all the information for the yardages and color options and everything else is all squeezed into this cute little booklet. Um, big thank you to my tech editor, Laura Cameron, who, um, did a fantastic job as usual and my test knitters um susan and jen and my layout graphics person Lori law who did the layout for it so yeah really excited about this if you follow me on instagram or facebook you'll see the patterns rolling out next week so you can see the whole shebang and then it will be available on ravelry and again i will have it at towel sheep and wool okay there is that um so that is something that you guys are finally seeing some stuff I've actually knit. Um, I have finished the second men's sweater that I was trying to get done by October, so go me. It's currently soaking. It's going to get blocked today. It's all put together. It's ready to go. I just got to shoot photos. Um, so the thing that I'm going to work on for the next few days uh, are my Brego socks. Let me find the cover. Okay, the pattern is by, oops, that has information on it. Do I have just the plane? I don't. See this. Uh, Virginia Sattler Reimer, these are her, this is her pattern, Brego socks, and I'm knitting it in Cherry Tree Hill sock in the Java colorway. That's pretty darn close to real life. And I have the first sock done down through the heel turn and I am headed through the foot um, so I'm gonna try to get the first one off the needles this weekend and hopefully cast the second one on um, I think I've mentioned before that I do knitting for a group called mittens for Akal. they are a charity uh, who provide knitted garments and ex accessories for a children's orphanage that is in Kazakhstan, I think it is. Anyway, the gal who runs it, she is she has adopted two children from this orphanage, and they are some place that gets oodles of snow, and it is cold most of the year. Um, it's not the greatest. I mean, it's I'm sure better than having the kids starve to death, but it 
you know, they don't have a lot of funding and most of the kids don't get adopted. And when they're 18, she has committed to, when they're 18 and phased out of the system, she has committed to providing them basically a care package for when they go leave to their adult life. Um, so she always does a graduate set of gifts that are, it's a sweater and socks, I think hat and mittens or hat and scarf, and then she puts in some basic toiletries. I mean, these kids really don't have a lot when they go off to become adults. Um, I mean, it's basically a small suitcase worth. Um, and then throughout the year, she also runs a Father Frost Drive where folks can knit socks of any size, basically infants up to adults, um, that then the kids get as Christmas presents um, she takes two shipments over a year. She's worked out a deal. I'm not, I think she flies American. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever airline she flies, she's worked out a deal with them. They actually comp her the cost of the boxes. So she like vacuum packs everything into boxes and she physically takes them over um, so that she visits with the kids who are there. She takes the kind of caretakers into town and they shop for basic stuff that they can find. She usually takes over a shipment of things we take for granted here like band-aids and bacitracin and like little hair clips for the girls. So I usually try to tuck a bunch of stuff in with that um, as well as a little donation just to help her with the cost of her tickets and getting things shipped and just all of that. So anyway, I'm hoping to finish those up. I think I have six or seven pairs of socks and some hats um, that I'm gonna ship to make sure that they get to her by the first week of November because that's when she packs her boxes for the Father Frost trip where she goes over to do the kind of Christmas present gift giving. So um, I'm gonna work on those, those are my next thing. And then I will be starting working on a collection that will release next year in February that I'm super excited about. It is a Viking themed knitwear collection. It's going to have four men's and four women's items in them. In it, the men's wear is going to be basically unisex, so it'll just be less fitted things, but, um, and they'll be modeled on a gentleman, but could be knit for women too. Um, lots of cables, a couple of things that I've had kicking around in the brain hopper for a while, but haven't had a chance to really um, come to fruition, and I'm super excited that it's happening. So um, look forward to <laughs> me rambling about it, but not much pictures between now and next February. Uh, lots of things to knit between now and then, let's, let's say that. Okay, I think I've covered everything with knitting. Spinning. I have not done much spinning because we weren't here for quite some time and then the crazy happened. So um, <laughs> I, I don't have a ton to show you, but I will show you what I've done, um, which is that I have finished the single spinning for these singles. These are the Rolex I was working on from Blaine Fleece and Fiber. Um, they are a combination of Merino, Merino wool, Coriadale wool, silk, bamboo. I keep forgetting there's one other component and I can't remember what it is. Anyway, these are being worked on for the Tolkien along that Jen at Blaine Fleece and Fiber is hosting, as are those Brago socks. Um, the colorway for this is Roads Go Ever Ever On and it's kind of a heathery greeny brown tweedy look. I love it. Anyway, these are ready to be plied, so that will be on my docket for today and through the weekend. Haven't decided what I'm going to spin next, but I'm thinking October may be the month where I spin a bunch of thick, squishy, worsted wool, worsted weight kind of things. I want to get some more uh, yardage spun up of stuff and it goes slow when you're spinning things that are sock weight or fingering weight. So yeah, I'm thinking that may be what winds up happening. Um, so that's all I have to talk about for spinning. Super quick, super nothing much. Let's move on to books. 
So I am still reading the book called How to Stop Time by Matt Haig sitting over there. I have like two chapters left. I'm almost done it. When I go away on vacation, I like to just take my um, iPad reader so I'm not taking like three books. Sometimes when we go on vacation, like if it had rained, it only rained one day um, and it was only the afternoon um, that we were on vacation. If it rains more than that and I sit inside, then I read more. And I hate to take like four paperback books if I can just take my iPad. So I'm gonna finish that up this, this week and then next time I talk to you guys, I will give you the full review, but it's gonna be a high high star rating, like four and a half kind of stars. I just already know this. I love everything about that book. It's so good. Um, so while I was away, what did I read? I read, um, this was on the prompt for um, one of Amazon's lists that was, I think it was the 100 greatest books or 100 books you should, you should read before you die. I think it was 100 books you should read before you die. Uh, it was the series of Unfortunate Events, which is the first in the Lemony Snicket series. I'm not really sure why this was on like the 100 books you should read before you die. It was good. Um, it's sort of a children's book. Um, it's a little bleak, but um, anyway, uh, it is super short and I had no idea. I hadn't, I hadn't seen the movie. I think Jim Carrey was in the movie and um, I think there's been more than one and I know there are more than one books of the books in these this series which I won't read it didn't um, grab me that well it was fun and I think probably if I was younger I would have enjoyed it more but um, I read it it was okay so um, and I guess I should say as always I will put links to all the books that I have read or I'm reading down below um, from Goodreads so that if you're interested you can go and read more information about them or see reviews or potentially buy them and read them yourself. The book that I started and I'm still reading and but got totally engrossed in is a book that was for the um, Around the World in 52 Books Challenge prompt. A book in which the protagonist is also uh, an anti-hero or villain. So I picked up the book called The Return of Moriarty by John Gardner. Um, you might know John Gardner. He is an American author. He's now deceased. Um, but he wrote the book Grendel, uh, which they also made a movie out of that was kind of a t retelling of the Beowulf um, tale from the point of view of the monster, from the Grendel point of view. So he likes to kind of take on the anti-hero, uh, I guess. Um, and that's kind of a theme through a lot of his books is he's looking at characters who probably aren't well loved uh, in their universe um, and maybe not in our universe either. Uh, but anyway, so Return of Moriarty, as you might guess, is a retelling of the using the characters from the Sherlock Holmes uh, world. So Sherlock Holmes does appear in this, as does Watson, very peripherally. This is really a story about Moriarty. It talks about how he became who he is, um, this criminal mastermind, and it it gives you all the backstory on how he's been running his criminal enterprise and what really happened at the falls with him and Sherlock Holmes, where they both supposedly fall to their death and then Holmes comes back from the dead. So he he's doing a really great job of pulling in like all of the details from the Sherlock Holmes body of work um, that Conan Doyle originally wrote and putting a different perspective on it, a different twist on it. Um, Moriarty is not a character. I don't think that you could love him. I mean, he's a very manipulative person who's the kingpin in a massive crime organization. However, you can at least appreciate how his mind works um, by reading this book. Uh, very well written. I'm certainly enjoying it. I'm, I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan, so having another book in the, la in the stable of uh, Holmesian literature is great. Um, and, and it's well written and good pace and 
feels very Conan Doyle-ish. Like it, um, it retains a lot of the flavor of the Holmes stories uh, by the tone of the writing and the pace and all of that. So um, again, this isn't finished. I'll report to you guys next time I'm here um, when hopefully I'll have that one done too in a couple of weeks. Um, the book that I have queued up next, I'm very excited to get back to, I guess, or return to. Um, it's called The Midwife's Tale, and I will report more on it. But um, Julia, if you have time to read, I'm going to highly recommend this for you. Um, it's by the historian Laurel Thatcher Ulrich. Um, it's a book I read, it's nonfiction. It's a book I read when I was doing my master's work in early American history. It's set in the colonial period and into the revolution and just after the revolution. And it follows the life of um, a New England midwife. She lives in Maine. Her name is Martha Ballard and she left a daily accounting book slash diary and what the author's done is she's taken sections from the diary and they're very sparse little tidbits um you know it'll say things like may 16th um heavy rainstorm walked to mrs so-and-so's house delivered her of a baby boy and then the next day she'll comment on maybe doing something in the garden and weaving linen or something like that. So the author takes all of those day-to-day -day little snippets, none of which are very developed. I mean, this woman is not writing like a journal page. She's writing maybe one line and maybe not every day. But the author has gone back and done so much extensive research that she's able to basically build this woman's day-to-day -day life and the life of the town that she lived in. Um, from these diary snippets. So it's a really interesting portrait of um, late 18th century, early America from a woman's perspective, which we really don't have very many extant sources that describe what women did every day. I mean, it really was a man's world if, if you're talking about written records. Um, from legal to medical to just day-to-day -day writing, it really was about men so the fact that this exists and the fact that this historian has taken so much time with it it's an amazing book I loved reading it um, and it is for the prompt a word that, that was added to I believe it's the um, Oxford English Dictionary I think it's Oxford English Dictionary the year you were born um, and it's not an exact thing but the word doula was came came into the Oxford English Dictionary as an actual um, addition to the lexicon the year I was born and that's a term that you can use as a midwife so I didn't like any of my other choices uh, so that that's the one I picked and I'm looking forward to that reread so uh, so that takes us through books um, I think I am I think I have just a couple more left after I finish these to get to my 52 books for this year. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to um, do that challenge again next year. I'm leaning towards that. Or if there's something else I want to try. I'm not sure. So I don't know. If you all have any fun things. I know um, Lisa Bergen over at Luby's Lot. I don't know if you watch her Cross Stitch podcast. But she's a, a big reader. And what she's done is she's got a bunch of unread paperbacks or unread books that she has on her shelf and she's wrapped each of them the same in the same paper and then she's just going to choose one at random because she won't know what it is but it's all books that she's wanted to read and I love that idea but I don't own a lot of book books anymore I have a lot of stuff on my Kindle or my iPad reader um, so I'm not sure how to do that but I love the randomness of it you know tiny decisions app for the win um, but how to actually make that happen, I don't know. So anyway, we will see. Let's move on to cross stitch because I'm already a half hour in. Um, so cross stitch, I have a lot to talk about here. 
got the stuff I'm working on, got a few acquisitions, which is kind of different for me, and then I've got short-term and long-term plans, so buckle up. All right, uh, first off, let's talk with talk about my finish, which is almost an FFO, so close. Uh, this is Welcome Autumn by The Drawn Thread. You can see it is not quite finished, but close. I decided to do this up as a little, um, Kind of hearth cushion. Um, the fabric is a 36 count linen from r, &R Reproductions in the colorway creme brulee. All of the floss I substituted out. It is either a redfish dye work silk or some color and cotton, hand dyed cottons. Love how this came out. Absolutely love it. Oh, um, the red apples are classic color work or whatever they are now. Anyway, I have finished it off with this cute little checked gingham. It's a little squishing, uh, which I love. I think that makes it just like very homespunny. And then I'm gonna use, I haven't decided yet how I want to attach them. Excuse me, I'm trying to get these out of a bag, but I'm about to show you some of these in here. Um, there we go. My friend Joy gave me these great little kind of brass acorns and I was thinking I might attach, like put one right here and maybe add one over here um, and maybe one up here, like utilize them throughout just as little decorations. And I was trying to think if I wanted to do like a ribbon of some kind. I don't know, I may just attach the acorns on there and call that good, but I wanted something that had a little bit more texture to it. Um, so I'll put the acorns on and then I'll decide about the ribbon. I had originally thought maybe to ruche the ribbon, but I don't. I think that's too fussy for this. This to me is a little bit more homespunny, if that's a word. So um, this is the Welcome Autumn piece. I can't remember if I actually told you the name of it, but John Thread is the designer. So this one is done. Um, and I really enjoyed working on that. It was a ton of fun. And I have the other seasons to do too. So at some point that will happen, but not right now. Okay, so that is done. And I'm excited because I just need to, I'm going to this weekend tack that um, opening closed and then it can go out with my other smalls. Um, okay, so then I think I spoke last time about the fact that I kind of have had startitis. Yeah, I have. And so what I started was Autumn Fairy by Joan Elliott Design. Um, so what I did in September for the starts is I actually let my Tiny Decisions app pick, um, Two? Two of the three? Yes, two of the three. Because the other one that I finished that I showed you last time, I actually started and finished. Um, now I can't even remember what it was. Oh, it was the October wordplay. That's it. Um, it picked that one. Uh, this is the one that I wanted to start no matter what for the turn of the fall, and then this other one that I'll show you is the other one, Tiny Decisions app picked. There, that was convoluted. I probably need more caffeine. Anywho, started this. It is a Joan Elliott pattern. Uh, I know you guys have all seen it, but I have started that. I am doing this on a 32 count Murano from Chromatic Alchemy. Oops, excuse me. Just dropping stuff on the floor. And here is where I am on this. The colorway is Feronia, and it was one of her um, Fabric of the Month Club colorways. So for this, I have started, I've gotten this wing mostly done and this wing mostly done. Um, started on some back stitching because I'm kind of doing that as I go. This is part of the headdressy fall leaf crown thing she has on. It's this right here. And I don't know if you guys can see, but there is a fair amount of Krynek in it. Um, this kind of bronze color is Krynek. 
and then the back stitching is Krennic. So the colors are a little different than I thought. Like this is a much limier green than I thought based on this. It's, this looks more yellow to me than this does, but I still like it. I mean, I'm totally happy with it, so. Um, so that is where I have gotten to on that project. So that one's gonna, was away, put away for a little while. And so I have been working on another new start, which is from the Bewitching Cross Stitch book. Um, they're Joan Elliott designs. And I am doing uh, the Celtic Wheel. Love this pattern. So this has the eight Celtic festivals on it. Um, this is Samhain, which is the one coming up at the end of this month, at the end of October. Um, so each section has the eight, has the eight festivals, and then it's got the, this kind of braid with sort of Celtic feel to it. So I am working this on a piece of 28 count Lugana from Color and Cotton, also from her Fabric of the Month Club in the Sampler Gold colorway. And here is what I have done. So this is one of the braid, kind of braided pieces that comes down to the center. And this is the start of the thistle blossom that's in Samhain. I toyed with using maybe a blending filament to add to it and in the end I decided I just wanted to start it and not wait on ordering anything. So just DMC, that's all that there is there. Um, I'm loving it, loving it, loving it on this fabric. I think it is perfect for it. So um, I've been working on this for a few days. I'll work on this today and then it will get put away and I will talk about what I'm working on going forward in a moment, um, but really loving this piece. And uh, I, it, you know, it's it's more complex looking than I think it is uh, to actually stitch. It's actually not a very hard stitch. Um, and I've started the back stitching, which you guys can see there. Tonight, I'm gonna probably concentrate on finishing this other leaf and maybe the thistle um, blossom itself. I'm trying not to save all of the woven uh, gold border till the very end because I'm afraid that if I do, it'll burn me out. So trying to do, you know, some of it and then do like a little bit of this motif kind of thing and work back and forth. So we'll see, I'll get a little bit more done on that. And you guys will see that again next time when I will be back to talk more about it. Okay, so that is that. That's what I've worked on since I've talked to you guys last. Okay, um, let's talk really quickly about some purchases. Um, I'm doing pretty good, I think. Um, we'll see how everything tallies out at the end of the month. I hadn't, I talked last time that I had put in um, an order with Color and Cotton and Angela's still working on that, which is fine. And for that, I basically used up my credit at the end of the June, at the, at the end of the month of June, that was the first half of Stitch from Stash 2018. So I'm still doing that for the second half of the year. Um, I didn't have any real purchases that went towards it. I think I had, I think it was like $14 or something. May not even, I don't even remember what it was. I'd have to go look. But anyway, for the beads um, and the two uh, skeins of Krynek for the Autumn Fairy. So it wasn't very much. And that did count towards my July, August uh, amount that I had in the kitty for Stitch from Stash, but I didn't use it all up. So I also have $37 in credits from finishes for this for the month of September. So that'll be on the plus side. The minus side is I spent um, just over thirty dollars at one two three stitch on a couple of pieces of um, easy guide um, fabric uh, for some full coverage pieces. We'll talk about that momentarily. 
um, in something other than 25 count, which is what I normally use, but I wanted to try 28 and 32 count and see what I thought of those. Um, but those aren't even here yet, and they're pretty boring because they're just white gridded fabric. Um, so I did succumb to the uh, D stash that Carissa at Carissa's Life on Instagram was doing. She was getting rid of an amazing amount of stuff. She actually still has some stuff for sale, so if you're interested, you can go over there and check her out. But um, I did pick up two things from her, one of which I've kind of had on my radar for a while, and the other of which I, now that I've started two Joan Elliott's and realized how much I love doing Joan Elliott's, that I just went ahead and got. So um, I picked up the pattern for the Sweet Pea Fairy, which is Joan Elliott. Uh, pattern and it came with the this um, hand dyed by Stephanie uh, it's 32 count Lugana in the colorway Isolde and then it came with the uh, beads and the Krynek for this I think there's one braid of Krynek that didn't come with it that I would have to pick up before I started it but I'm not starting it anytime soon. I just loved it and I love the fabric and it was a great deal for what you got. So I got it. Um, and then the other one that had been on my radar a while was uh, Sleepy Hollow from Glendon Place. I know you guys have seen this around the internets because I'm going to excuse the crinkling. Several folks, um, let's see. I can't remember who finished it this year and who finished it last year, but there's been several that of folks who are floss tubers who have finished it. There's a better picture of it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Um, and so this came with the called for um, Belfast from Picture This Plus in Haunted. that and I I'm pretty sure when I start this I'm gonna see if I can get the moon in here where there's kind of that haze around it and then it also came with um, the Karen water lilies that you stitch the moon in it's getting a little washed out there but it's a kind of lemony yellow that's probably a little closer um, and then it came with one of the Krynex and the beads. Again, for a super reasonable price, um, with shipping included from Canada, and it was here in like three days. So, uh, yeah, uh, could not resist those. Neither of these are getting started anytime soon, but I have them, and I'll put that away later so you guys don't have to listen to me rustle it. So those are my purchases, um, and I don't think, uh, I may put in an order in another month just to pick up a few odds and ends of some Krynek and um, a couple of things of beads that I need, but we'll see. I'm kind of waiting till I get to an order that's more than like one skein of uh, floss worth. You know how that goes, right? Uh, okay, so let's talk some short-term plans. So we've got, after today, we've got three days left in the month, the 28th, 29th, and 30th, which gets us through the weekend. So I'm going to be working on my Which Way project, which I did not bring the project itself. I don't know why that means project itself. There you go. But it is this one, which is from Heaven and Earth Designs. It is that adorable one, which I'm sure you guys remember and recognize. So I felt like I, I was in the mood to do something that was kind of seasonal like that. And it's got the graveyard and the pumpkins and the witch and all those great sort of fall colors. So I'm going to be working on that actually through the second. So I'm going to put five days in on it. Back when I first started Floss Tube, I think it was, I was doing five day rotations and I actually really liked it. And I felt like maybe I wasn't getting enough work, like I wasn't touching enough different things, but 
I sort of lapsed back into that and I think I'm going to try to keep up with that concept um, certainly through the end of the year and it's looking like next year too so uh, which way we'll get five days my hope and plan is to get a page finish on that sucker and then maybe even keep moving that would be great um, I haven't decided for sure yet what I'm gonna work on then once October starts Probably something smallish that I can take to Taos with me since I'm going to be there for the Sheep and Wool Festival for two days. Um, I'm just staying overnight one night, but you know, something to do in the hotel that night and kind of have on travel. So I think that's the plan, but what that is, I don't know yet. So stay tuned. Um, if y'all watch Sarah over at Stitch and Mommy, you know one thing that she's decided she's going to do for 2019 is to have a no new starts year. And I liked the concept of that and like because I always love a challenge and I think it would be fun to do with her but I thought you know I want to get one of the things I want to do in 2019 is get a lot more time in on my full coverage and I wanted to have some projects to work on for the full coverage fanatics monthly themes I'm really excited about those um, if you haven't been over to the group uh, it's on Facebook. I'll put a link below, but I have set up all of the challenges for 2019 So you can either do things like buy the numbers again. There's two numbered tiers 1200 stitches in a month or 2400 stitches in a month each month We're gonna have the same kind of themed concept where it'll be you know pick a piece that it has a theme of fairy tales or a theme of ocean or seas something like that um, each month and work on that project and then I'm also hosting four 90-day challenges to work on one piece for 90 days so we'll have four of those basically each quarter so that's what we're doing over there and I really wanted to work on projects um, for the monthly themes because that's what I like I like themed things so I thought, well, how, how could I do both? Because I, I, I don't have enough full coverage projects to hit all of the themes. So if I wanted to do that, I would need to start some stuff, which seems counterintuitive. And I talked to Sarah about this. We were chatting about this earlier this week where I was like, you know, if the purpose is to not have any new starts, is it weird to have new starts now so you don't have new starts then um, and you know I, I've just decided to completely rationalize this and I'm totally okay with that so <laughs> it makes me happy to do those kinds of challenges where I work on a project in a given month and say yes I did that so I'm gonna be starting a bunch of stuff between now and the end of the year in the hopes that I can stick with the no start in 2019 challenge and just work on projects that I currently have. So, okay, here we go. Put your seatbelts on. Um, there are, get into my notes. Okay, there are three full coverage pieces that I'm planning to start and one other Joan Elliott piece that I'm planning to start before the end of 2018 to carry me over into 2019 and spend 2019 working on a lot of these massive projects that I have. Um, so let's talk about the things that I'm going to be starting first. I think that's easiest and then I'll kind of expand to talk about how my plans are going to fit together. Okay, so the first, well, not the first thing I'm going to start, but one of the things I'm going to start is this Joan Elliott piece, Winter Fairy. I have been planning to start this in December anyway for the kickoff of winter. I'm still going to do that. It'll definitely get five days in, in December, and beyond that, we'll, we'll see. But for sure, this will be out in, in December and will be started. Um, I'm using a color and cotton um, fabric of the month. It is Lugana. I don't have a colorway name. It was the July, I think July 2017 colorway. Um, but I love it and I think it's gonna be so great for that project. 
a little washed out there. That's pretty darn close. So it's blues and kind of a periwinkle blue purple with a little bit of gray in there. Um, and I'm really excited about that. And so this is the one thing that I'm, I needed to pick up um, some Krynek and some beads for. So that may be a purchase that happens before December, but at any rate, I, I will be starting that. Um, then I'm going to be starting, I told, as I said, three um, full coverage pieces. I want to start this little ornament a long winter's nap. And my plan is to actually do this on a 32 count so it comes to a nine by nine piece. Um, so I'll talk about where this is gonna get slotted in, but this will get started. And then I'm also going to be starting this piece, which is called Lady of the Woods. And I haven't seen anybody working on it. I'll take it out of the package. And I know this isn't a very good picture of it. I think it's an older one. Um, yeah, 2007 is uh, the copyright on it. It's when they were still in Minnesota. I'm not sure why I haven't seen folks working on it because it seems to me like it would be the kind of thing that a lot of folks would want to work on. Um, so it's this central figure here that I guess is supposed to represent an angel, but you know, I kind of think of her as like a fairy queen. And then it's got stags and foxes and she's holding she's holding a fawn there's chipmunks um butterflies sorry you guys can't see that uh butterflies this bear uh the owl i think this is a raptor of some kind like maybe a merlin um i have a feeling once I get started on this there's gonna be like more stuff in in here like kind of hidden in the background that you can't even see in the picture which is part of the fun but I love the theme and I love the sentiment and I love the concept of there being like a, a protectorate in the woods for the furry beasties so I will be starting that one and then finally I'm going to be starting this piece, which is Eternia from Amy Stewart, which I had requested as a quick stitch, which Heaven and Earth did up for me. But if you look at the size, the quick stitch is listed as 18 by 16 inches on 25 count fabric. It's 450 by 403. I mean, this that's not a small piece. That's not quick at all. And the rest of the piece is massive. There's more sky and trees and stuff all around it. So the thing that I really loved about this was the woman and her horse, as y'all might guess, because you know me. This one reminds me of my Ben as well. Uh, I never rode him wearing those types of dresses, but you know, <laughs> it's a good theory. It feels good to think that. So what I did is I decided I still didn't want it that big um, and I went over to handmade.com. They, they, um, she has a, ch a chart cropper over there where you basically import the graphic and then you can manipulate the size and choose how you want to crop it even further. And so this is what I came up with. And the nice thing about this is it tells you, like, I have to, I can skip the first 164 rows and I'm gonna crop it down 163 rows. And then I'm gonna trim a little off this side and a little off the bottom. So basically this is all that's going to be there. And I'm much happier with that. And it makes it 280 by 208, which, you know, in full coverage, it's still gonna take a while, but it's a whole lot less land um, real estate. Um, sorry, I'm getting comments here from uh, Michelle at Bendy Stitchy. So I, I'm ignoring you for now, Michelle, but I will talk to you momentarily. Um, so I think what I'm going to do with this one is a little bit different start because I'm not totally convinced that I love this right here, this little blob of green that I think may look odd when it's like pulled out of the picture. So I do need to leave this tree here. 
I think, to sort of frame the, the picture and her dress trails over here. But I think, based on how the pages are laid out, that this section right here, that's her with the horse, um, is like a whole page, you know, right there is a whole page. So I think I may start like right about here and then work this way and I may just do my own little thing over there in the corner and just convert it into all sky. Um, I think you could easily extrapolate the clouds out and just do that in, but I'm gonna see what it looks like when the actual colors are there. Um, I can't really crop it much more this way or I'll leave the butt end of the horse um, and I can't obviously crop it down to there to get rid of it because I will crop the horse's head and her head off. So that is my current plan for that one. And um, so I have fabric for that and I have fabric for Lady of the Woods. Um, and I'm just waiting on fabric for that little ornament. Um, so my plan is to start this one that I just showed you, the Eternia. Um, mid-October and work on that for five days and then I'm gonna start Lady of the Woods at the end of October um, I've got it penciled in to start on the 26th so right now I think that's my current plan for those and then I'll start Long Winter's Nap in November and I'll start Winter Fairy in December and then that will be everything started that I want to work on for 2019 and I'm gonna jump on the no start bandwagon um, so at almost an hour here I don't want to go too much longer but let me just give you at a high level my thoughts for what I want to do for next year so what I've decided to do is I'm gonna pick one piece and I'm gonna work on it 10 days every single month and it's a full coverage piece do I have it in here? I'm betting I didn't even bring it. Hang on, going through my stuff. Nope, didn't bring it. I'm gonna insert a picture of it here even though I know you guys have already seen it. Um, it is the full coverage piece called Winter's Encounter. And so my, my goal for that is to put 10 days in a month on that regardless. I'll probably split it up into two five day blocks. Then I want to spend five days every month on whatever is the theme full coverage piece. So for instance, in January, it's um, our theme is pick something that says like cozy and ho home and hearth and heartwarming. Um, so I'm going to do long winter's nap for that. Um, February is fantasy and fairy tales. I'm going to work on Eternia because, you know dress. Uh, March is vintage things. I'm going to work on a stitching shelf that month. Um, zoo and aquarium month is April and I'm going to work on Lady of the Woods because definitely things found in a zoo like bears. Um, summer fun is June. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed May. May is gardening, which is a stitching shelf. And I'm also going to work on that again for summer fun, which can include things that you do outdoors. I may drop down and do some of the actual summer things because um, I'm sure I won't be done that top row <laughs> between now and June. Uh, so I'm going to work on this again in June. July, I'm going to go back to Eternia when the theme is sea to shining sea because there is this body of water behind them, which we'll pretend is a sea. Uh, August is Woodland Creatures, so I'm going back to Lady of the Woods. Uh, September is Heavenly Bodies, um, so stars, moon, comets, anything that's in the sky. So I'm going to work on Which Way because of that big old full moon in the background. I'm going to stick with this for autumn color because it's got pumpkins in it. And lots of good autumn colors and then November is things with wings so I'm gonna probably work on this but I might work on six of swords I have options for that month and then welcome winter is December so I'm either going to work on winter's encounter 
and see if I can put 15 days in on that for that, or I'll go back and work on long winter's nap. So I'm able to do all 12 of those with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven full coverage pieces. And the full coverage pieces that I'm starting, none of them are that big. I guess I should say, back up here, um, Lady of the Woods, while she's technically a full size piece, she's 18 by 24. So she's not like the size of a stitching shelf. She's kind of more, more normal sized. Um, 18 by 12 inches, sorry, 18 by 12 inches on 25 count. Okay, then, so I've got 10 days a month that I'm gonna work on Winners Encounter as my focus piece. I've got five days a month that I'm going to be working on my full coverage fanatics themed piece. That basically leaves me three other five day slots to work on during the month. And I'm going to use my Tiny Decisions app to fill those slots in with whatever, whatever I've got of the pieces that I have percolating. Um, the only exceptions to this are going to be um, if I am close to finishing something, I may opt to not use the random Dis Tiny Decisions app to pick something. Um, I'm going to just, you know, leave myself the leeway that if I'm close and I want to finish something, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it. I don't know that any of these pieces will get me there, but we'll see. Um, I did mull over doing Monogamous May with Stitch and Mommy, but that's a month I have a lot of travel. And I looked at the pieces I have and I just don't, I'll take one piece in the 10 days that I'm going to be out and about to work on. And again, I will choose that one because it'll be what fits in the suitcase. Um, but I'm not gonna do the whole month that way because I still wanna stick with that focus piece. And there's no way I'm taking a full coverage piece um, as a travel project to be away for 10 days, just not doing it. Don't have, don't have space in my one suitcase to do that and still have clothing. So, uh, so that's my current plan. Um, so there'll be a bunch of new starts happening here in the next three months to kind of close out the year. Um, we'll see what else I wind up working on. I don't have a ton of specific plans otherwise for the rest of the year. I probably will tiny decision app, uh, some random five day choices and just slot stuff in and work on it as I go. Um, with some manipulation, I hate to use that word cause it sounds like I'm sort of cheating on something, but uh, like when I go to Stitches SoCal, I want to be able to pack something to work on. It's not going to be a full coverage piece. Um, I will probably pick something like one of the Prairie Schoolers that I'm working on because uh, there's only a couple colors and I really could just take one color, the fabric and a chart and still be able to work on it. Um, so I think that's what I got going. Um, Okay, a minute and three. I think I'm finally done talking. Um, I hope everybody is well. Um, looking forward to the upcoming change in seasons, change in seasons in your end of the world. Uh, as always, I welcome your comments, questions, thumbs ups, any of those great things that allow us to interact in the world of the internet. Um, I'm gonna try to talk to you guys in two weeks. I'm really, yeah, gonna try for that. Um, and I think, I think I can make that work now that we're kind of back in normal stream of uh, schedule things. So until I talk to you next time, um, be well, have fun with all of your crafting and take care.